Hey, Mr. Day. Okay, so I'm going to start my screencast for my mousetrap car. I did my mousetrap car for distance, and I have it right here. Um, let's see. I hope you can see it. So what I did is you helped me cut two um, whiteboards, and then I just took some other whiteboard pieces to help hold it together. And then I put the mouse trap here and added two wheels here and here. And um, I have string here and it pulled and this one was for distance. So pretty much um, to make it go for distance, I had a couple notes on what you had to do. And um, pretty much, so longer lever arms, which I have here as you can see, so the more string that can be pulled off the drive axle will translate into more turns that the wheels can make. This causes your vehicle to cover more distance under the pulling force. And larger wheels um, cover more distance for each rotation than a smaller so diameter wheel. The best wheel tends to be between one to, feet, one to two feet in diameter. This one's about 1 1.5. So and then you can get more turns with a smaller axle for the same length of string than with a larger one. And more turns of the axle means more turns of the wheel, which means greater travel distance. And um, if they move slower, they tend to go like for a longer distance. So that's what I was trying to do. And let's see, what else did I do? With the torsion wheel and the torque, I had to figure out how much energy is stored in the spring, and I found that out because um, not all mouse trap springs have the same spring tension. And the greater the tension in a mouse trap, the more energy you'll be able to store. Um, so yeah, and then I you just tried to remove all friction. You can't remove all of it, but you can do that by adding um, rubber bands on the sides, and yeah, so that helped. And that was pretty much for the distance car. And now I will get into the physics. <clears throat> okay, so here's a video of my car. Um, there's my buddy Sherry. She was helping me out with it. And it was about, I think you said 16 inches and converted that to meters. It was about... 19 inches. 19 inches, and then converted it. It was about 0.5 meters anyway, so we'll do the measurements for that. And let me just play this video so you can see how it actually moved and started and slowed down. Wait, how do you play it? Okay. See? Went pretty far, actually. Um... I'll do the actual thing, um, distance in a second, but it looks like it went about five feet at least. I'll measure it in a minute. So yeah, as you can see, it started the distance car. It the t um, by having the longer leg arms, it made longer. Um, I mean, more rotations to that, which helped it go further. And I'll just show you again. Yeah. Okay, and then this um, is Tracker, which I actually found very helpful and super useful, and I thought it was really cool how you could just pick one part of it, and Tracker would follow the thing throughout the movement. And as you can see in this, wait, is this position time or velocity time? I think velocity time. Um, you can see how it slowed down towards the end with this parabola and then all the data here. And it tracked it, as you can see there. Okay, and then I put in the information that I got from Tracker um, okay. into Logger Pro. And it showed me all of this different information, which I plugged in to the A a T squared plus B T plus C formula and got my best fit lines and saw the fastest velocity or how fast it went, the fastest time, and then velocity and the position as it as it was rolling, as you can see, it started off and then starts slowing down, and you can see the parabola there and then the constant line there of it slowing. 
And yeah. Okay, now I'm going to explain how I found the energy stored inside the torsion wheel of my mouse trap. So this is what I have <clears throat> here. So here is the radius of the torsion wheel, which was zero. I mean, 0 0.06 meters. And this is the y-intercept. And wait, what did you say? The 5.5? That's the x-intercept? That's the, the height. Yeah, that's the, that's the height. Um, this is the slope. We found it by this. Mm -hmm. And then to find the slope, you had to plug in y equals mx plus b, and I just took the radius and the slope, and then plus 1.8 newtons, which I found when I found the area of the rectangle, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> the area of the triangle, which is um, base times height, and then 1 half base times height, and I got um, 0.34 joules, and then the to and then um, when I found the area of the triangle, I got 0.35 joules, and then when you add that together, you get a total of 6 0.69 joules. So that was the total energy stored in um, my mouse trap's spring. Okay, and to find the displacement, I'm back here on um, Logger Pro where I used the examine tool right here and found that the displacement was 0 0.15 when I used the examine tool of my car's energy. Okay, and also another point was my maximum velocity, which you can see right here, was 0 0.2.06 um, meters per second, right, velocity, at 4.93333 seconds. And the kinetic energy would be around the same. And, and that concludes the physics and my project for the mousetrap car. Um, as you can see, I have all the physics, P-I-D, um, and... Physics is done! <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this video, and <laughs> I'll see you later. I'm going to go study for my final. Done? Yeah. <laughs> Bye!